Hello, and welcome back to the complete guide to teleport here at the Rockwood Academy. In this second tutorial, we're going to take a look at using teleport provided container images and running teleport locally on your own machine using Docker for Mac, Docker for Windows, or any container runtime on a Linux distribution. We will also explore using Docker Compose to provide a lab-like experience using some custom images provided by teleport as well. We've got lots to cover today, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Let's get started. So as we do on these courses, we're going to rely on the projects and documentation as much as possible. Let's jump over to Teleport's documentation right now. Perfect. So as we can see here, we have an entire page dedicated in the documentation to running Teleport with Docker, which is great for us. We can see that the images are hosted on Quay.io and we have access to a 7 image, which is an alias to the latest version of 7.x release. But of course, semantically versioned and tagged images are available if that is a route that you wish to take, and one that I would definitely encourage as much as possible. Now there's one major difference from what happens with teleport running in a container image versus the installation methods that we used on bare metal machines on Red Hat, Debian, and any other distribution using curl. If you watched the first tutorial, you'll notice that we didn't configure Teleport in any way. We just installed the package and allowed the systemd unit file to run Teleport. When this happened, Teleport detected that there was no configuration and generated one for us. However, we will not get the same experience when running the container image. Let's take a look. So instead of starting with these commands, we're just going to copy the image name. And if we run over to a terminal and do a docker container run dash rm dash it, and we run this without any other parameters, what we're telling docker or any other container runtime to do is to pull this image and run everything by the defaults. This would be the entry point and command specified inside of the Docker file or the tool that was used to generate it. When we run this for the teleport container images, it's going to exit and tell us, hey, there is no configuration. So the first major difference is in a container environment, we must provide an explicit configuration. And we're going to take a look at how to generate that now also using the same container image. So the teleport binary does ship with a configure command, which will print out a base configuration for us to use. However, we may also want to understand why this behavior is changed, and we can actually inspect the container image to see what is going on underneath the hood. If we do a docker image inspect, passing in the image name, we'll be able to see all the metadata from this container image manifest. The one that's important to us is the entry point and the command because we want to know what the default actions are. Now let's just quickly jump to the command, which we can see is null. And then the entry point, which we can see they're using a package called dump init, which is an init system built for containers to run teleport start and, and a very explicit dash C pointing to a teleport configuration. So we could bypass this behavior by overriding the entry point and calling our own teleport start, allowing the container image to generate that config for us. And while this works, this is not really a great approach because that configuration is now inside of a running container and should this container be start or stopped, we are going to lose it completely. So in a container environment, we definitely want to be able to pass in or mount a configuration file directly or even both build and ship your own custom images with that config. I'd probably refrain from the latter for a flexibility point of view. Mounting it in at runtime is going to open up possibilities to migrating to Kubernetes, for example. So we're going to cancel this and not use that approach. So let's take a look at modifying the command that we just ran. Well, this time instead of start, we're going to use that configure sub command I mentioned a moment ago. 
And now we have a base configuration that we can save locally for today's tutorial and use and tweak as we move forward with the exercises. So I've copied and pasted the config from the configure command and saved that locally as teleport.yaml. Now we're just going to make one change to this configuration and that is to remove the node name from line two. This can be inferred by teleport at runtime from the host name of the container or machine that this is running on. Okay, so let's jump back over to the documentation. Now that we have our default configuration, we want to be able to run teleport. We're going to copy this command to run teleport into VS Code and make one or two modifications to get started. So something that has become a bit of a rule at the Rockwood Academy is that we never ever name containers. This becomes a piece of global state that I'm not really comfortable with in my environment. So I'm going to immediately discard dash dash name teleport. We have two volumes being provided to the container, one for the state of teleport, which is in varlib teleport, and the other for the configuration that we need to inject into the system. We're going to modify these in just a second, but let me run over the other flags first. We have a few ports being exported or exposed, sorry, to the host system. 3080 is for the web UI. 3025 is actually used for node communication, node SSH communication within the cluster. So if we wish to add other containers with other members, this would be really important. And 3023 is the actual SSH port required for clients to connect to the Teleport cluster. So let's come back to our volumes. Now, I'm not a fan of using arbitrary directories in my, my home file system, again, because I don't want any sort of global state and I include file system mounts as part of that. So we're going to modify this to be pwd slash teleport.yaml and make this path rather explicit too. So this is going to pull through shell interpolation my current working directory and the teleport.yaml available there. Now for the state within the teleport system, I don't want to mount that to a local file system. So instead I'm going to use Docker volume, create teleport data. This gives me a named volume where a state can be persisted across container restarts and even recreations. We provide the named volume name and say that we wish to mount it to this location. I can now copy and paste all of these commands or both of these commands to my terminal. We'll see the volume is created and we should get a container running with the configuration that we need. Now we can verify that this is correct by browsing to localhost on port 3080. So new tab, localhost 3080. Add HTTPS. This is in Chrome, it's Firefox this time, so we don't have to type this as unsafe. We can do advanced and accept. And we now have the teleport UI ready for us to log in. Okay, so there is one more thing I'd like to cover in today's tutorial, and that is using Docker Compose to provide a multi node configuration for teleport. This will allow you to explore all the features available in the teleport package. So let's jump back over to the code and I'll show you the changes that I have made to allow this to happen. The first thing that I have done is create a docker compose.yaml file. I have defined a couple of volumes, one for the certificates to live in, which will be shared across all the nodes in the cluster, and data, which will allow the teleport server to store its state in a persistent manner. The first thing we configure is the teleport server, and you will see this is very similar to what we did previously. We're using the Docker CLI. We mount in our server configuration, our data volume, and our certificates. Now, in order to make this a one command and up Docker Compose environment, I have added a health check, which is going to periodically, every two seconds, run TCTL status. TCTL status will exit zero when the server is healthy and non-zero when it is not. This allows us to have a dependency on node 1 and node 2. These containers will only be started after the teleport server is happy, which will limit and remove most of the error cases that you could see in such an environment. 
If we take a look at our teleport server config, again, is very similar to what we've already been working with. However, I have added something called a token to the off service. Now this is just hard coded because this is a lab style environment and should never be deployed to production. But what this says is that we allow anyone with a static token of rawcode-academy to authenticate against our server on a proxy and node basis. This allows other nodes to join if they have access to the static token. I have also generated a teleport client configuration. This is very similar to the server one. However, we have the proxy service uh, disabled, the off service disabled, We've left SSH service on. We still want to be able to connect to the other nodes in the cluster. And I have now provided the hard coded token and authentication address for the server. So the off token is Rocco-Academy and the off server is teleport-server on 3025. This is just the name of the service and the Docker Compose file. Now what should happen is I'm going to go to my terminal, run Docker Compose up. We should see the teleport server start first become healthy and then the other two nodes come online. Let's see what happens. So we can see the server is created first. We don't have any nodes yet. And that's the server coming online. And we can see the nodes, the different colors from the container log starting to show up, which gives me a pretty strong indication that this has now worked. But don't take my word for it. Let's check. So we're going to jump over to here. We're going to do HTTPS localhost 3080. And we get the web interface for our teleport server. Now, we haven't created a user yet, so we do need to jump over to our terminal. I'm going to have to do a Docker container LS and I'm going to execute into our teleport server, which is this one here. Container exec. Um, I mean, we just want a shell. From here, I could do TCL users add roles, admin, logins, root, and I'll add the raw code user. This is going to give me a link that I can copy and paste into my browser. I just need to remember to change the container ID to localhost. And now we can set a password. So let's just let one password take care of this. Teleport lab. My username is raw code and save. Now I can click on this and have it scan the QR code. And I also need to copy the password to here. Uh, my 2FA into here and we have now created an account. So if I zoom in a little bit, I have tested this environment and the state is persisted into the data volume, which is why we have a few extra nodes and containers here. Whoops. Uh, but we can see that everything seems to be working as expected. And in fact, if we take a look at the container IDs, we have CC9 and 1B6, is that I should be able to click on connect and root. And I now, inside of my container environment, running a teleport client as part of my teleport lab environment. Nice and simple, this code will be published and a link will be in the description. So you can use this Docker Compose with the configurations to try this out yourself starting now. Go have some fun. We'll be back with the server access workshop tomorrow. I'll see you all then. Have a great day.